guys, Axel here, back again with another YouTube video. Today we're covering something very important that honestly, I wish I knew when I first started with all this prop firm stuff. So, we're covering the three things that I wish I knew before starting a prop firm challenge. Now, when you start a prop firm challenge, if you're new to this world, if you're new to this whole thing, there's a lot of things that you don't know. And the sooner that you know these things, the better for you. Now, before we move forward, please, please, please click the subscribe button down below. If you want more prop firm content, more prop firm reviews, and even trading vlogs, click the subscribe button down below. Now, let's get straight into it. Number one thing that I wish I knew was not starting a challenge during a news heavy week. Now, the way that I trade, as many of my clients already know, is with the EA. And with the EA, when the markets are too volatile and unpredictable, especially, especially like when there are a lot of news events happening that could sway the market either way in a very violent way, it is a bit dangerous for the strategy that I currently use. Now, of course, there's things in place to protect me in case something like that happens, but nevertheless, that does lessen our chances of passing. So one of the things that you want to make sure, now this depends on your strategy, of course, maybe you have a strategy that relies on trading news. In that case, then you, you do want to do the opposite of what I'm saying here. But if you're a normal person or if you're one of my clients, it is better to stay away from the very news heavy weeks because usually those tend to be very unpredictable and depending on what the news actually announced will determine the outcome of where that pair is actually going to go and sometimes unexpected things can happen massive slippage can happen in your trades uh and a lot of bad stuff can happen trust me i saw it all so yeah that's number one number two is something that a lot a lot a lot of people go through and that's rushing phase two so let's say you took a challenge you passed phase one right which is the hardest part trust me guys if you pass phase one you're like 90 percent of the way there but there's something that happens because you have such a short time limit with the first phase you try to trade the second phase the same way and that usually ends up badly because you end up either over leveraging or trying to just rush it so the second thing is rushing the phase two account. So, so think about it like this. You actually have double the time that it took you to do the first phase and you have half the target. We should just slow it down a bit and go a bit more secure because there's very low chances of really getting wiped out and losing that account. If you were able to hit 10% or 8% in a 30 day window, it is so much easier to hit 5% in a 60 day window. But the problem that happens is a lot of us get too excited. I mean, I'm a victim of, of this as well, I'm not gonna lie, but we get too excited, we wanna finish it fast, we want, we, we're too excited, we're starting to think, oh, oh shit, I already passed phase one, so, so that means I'm already funded, let me, let me wrap this up real quick. And then you end up fucking up in phase two. Now you have to start all over and spend money again on a platform challenge that I'm pretty sure you don't want to do. So yeah, a piece of advice, slow down during phase two. There's nobody running after you. Matter of fact, time is on your side when it comes to the phase two because you have 60 days to just complete 5%. And realistically, if you were able to pass the first phase, the second phase should not be a problem if you just keep your head together and instead of rushing it, you take it slow and you do it the right way. Now, the third point is a little bit kind of similar as well. So, a lot of times you'll have people, including myself, who pass phase one and pass phase two, but then mess up the funded accounts. Let me tell you why this happens. This happens because you keep trading the funded accounts as if it's a challenge, when that's not actually the case. In a funded account, you don't have a profit target, you don't have a time limit, you don't have anybody on your head uh, pressuring you to perform really, really fast. But a lot of us keep trading it the same way we did with a challenge account, which has a lot of restrictions, and we end up either over leveraging or a lot of the stuff that I said in point two also happen in point three once you're already funded. So the same premise, again, slow it down. Just slow it down. If you're already funded, you, you have a golden ticket. Literally, you already won. Okay, now relax. Don't go ahead and try aiming for the stars. It's like, oh, I got funded. Let me make my first $100,000 a month. Like, bro, relax. Start with your first $10,000 a month, all right? Start there. Start 
somewhere close to where you currently are and then put it up as you go. But that's the thing, once you get funded and you're excited, you have a 200K account and you're fully funded, now you start going crazy. You're like, oh, I'm gonna make 60 grand this month. Fuck it. Then you go crazy on the risks, you go crazy on the lot, and guess what? Two moves happen, three moves happen. You're totally wiped out, your account is gone, and now you have to start over from a challenge. You have to start over and do all of this work again, and that's gonna take you at least a month, if not more, to do this whole cycle again. So, listen. When you have a funded account, your main, main strategy should be actually not greed and, and going over a lot of profits, but it should be preservation. You want to preserve that account as much as possible. You want to be very, very protective of that account. Because think about it. If you blow it, look at how much work you need to do again. You do not want to do that. But guess what? If you take it slow and you aim for, for a good profit target that is not too crazy, hey, take the profits, take that home, and then you'll be alive for the next month, and then the next month, and then the next month. This way, you can have a long-term source of income for the next few months because you're not being too greedy. But if you go the other way, if you're chasing massive, massive payouts, trust me, what ends up happening, you're gonna over leverage, you're gonna lose your account, and you're gonna be extremely, extremely, extremely sad and discouraged to even start doing the second one, to even start doing all of this shit all over again. So yeah, those are really the three things that I would advise for anybody who's starting off with this whole platform thing, with this whole challenge stuff. Yeah, those are three pointers, keep in mind. Now, if you guys don't know what we do here at Pass Your Challenge, basically, all we do is help people pass their prop firm challenges using automated trading bots. So, we have a community of over 2,000 people on Discord, about 3,000 on Telegram. A lot, a lot of people are using this stuff to get funded hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, this strategy has been proven to work time after time again. We've been in the game for a couple years now, and this same strategy is still working for all of our people. And if you want to know more about it, you want to learn more about it, maybe you want to join, you already heard of us and you just want to actually get more information on all of the stuff we do, you can go ahead, click the link in the description which will take you to my telegram and just send me the word pass, that way I know that you're interested in passing your funding challenge and then we can have a discussion. But yeah, that's basically it for the video. Quick one, quick reminder, just to make sure that you're uh, solid on your next entry for the next challenge. So, let's recap three things I wish I knew. Number one, I wish that I didn't start some challenges during the news heavy week, which is very dangerous sometimes, depending on your strategy, of course, but yeah, it can be dangerous. Number two would be rushing your phase two and treating it as if it's a phase one. And in reality, you have double the time, half the profit target. So all you need to do is actually slow down, do the same thing you did before and even lower your lots and you'll be just fine and you'll have a much, much higher chance of passing that one than the first one. And finally, it's treating a funded account like it's a challenge when in reality, you should be focusing on preservation instead of chasing greed and trying to get the biggest payouts. You should be chasing getting consistent payouts. So yeah, there is no point in going through all of this trouble and passing phase one, passing phase two, getting funded and just in the end for you to blow it. That is one of the saddest, saddest moments a trade you can actually go through. So please, don't go through that. I don't want you to be discouraged with this whole trading thing. It's already difficult as it is, right? We're already in one of the hardest professions, but of course, one of the highest rewarding ones for the people that are actually able to figure it out. So yeah, don't blow your account. Let's stay in the game. If you want to know more info about what we do, click the link down in the description. If you want more prop firm related content, all you need to do is click subscribe. All right, see you.